we are going to be talking about some differences in wireless communication. We're going to be going over some basics as far as radio waves. We're going to talk more in depthly about Cisco's unified wireless solution. Some different protocols for securing our wireless LAN, implementing our wireless LAN, as well as some troubleshooting tips for our wireless LAN. Let's go in and talk about some differences with the wireless. Now some things to consider as far as the differences in wireless communication versus wired. Physical layer. There's no actual physical cable plugging into the box, so this being a cable. So that's a big difference. CSMA CA versus CSMA CD which is carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance this is carrier sense multiple access with collision detection this one in a wired half duplex environment uses a mechanism to detect a collision on the line if there's co a collision it backs off in this environment CSMA CA it sends an intent to transmit signal first telling everybody else to hold off and then it'll go ahead and send its signal. Half duplex. Send or receive not both. Can do both at the same time. Again there's no physical connection and it can be a little bit tougher to troubleshoot because you can't see everything. You don't know what's going to be blocking the signal, things like that. So it can have some more issues. So what I want to do now is go in and talk a little bit further about these radio waves that we're using. Now, there are a whole bunch of 802.11 standards. These are the ones you're going to need to pay attention to for the test. This is not going to be very, again, as far as the CCNA goes, you're not going to be getting hammered on wireless. They actually have a separate wireless cert for Cisco, but you are going to need to know some basic technologies of it, including these frequencies here in different standards, 802.11 standards. Now, 802.11a. 5 gigahertz range up to 23 non-overlapping channels if you're going with that H extension so 802.11H is an extension of 802.11A these are your different transmit speeds up to 54 megabits but if you're going to get that 54 megabits you've got to be within 50 feet of that access point 802.11B and G you're both going you're going to need to know both of those go in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range three non overlapping channels b gives you longer range but less throughput 11 megabits per second g gives you more throughput but not as long of a range i think that's recommended within 100 feet of the access point there's also a new standard that's going to be out, 802.11n, and what that does is it tries to make use of multiple antennas. So I guess they would call it antennae. <laughs> multiple transmit and receive antennas working together. So what that's going to do with multiple antennas working together, it's not going to look like a porcupine or anything, it's just going to be built into the device you're going to get a faster throughput. So it's going to try to increase throughput by increasing the number of send and receive antennas on the box. 802.11n. So definitely take some notes on this. Maybe pause this for a moment. Take some notes on the different standards. Very testable information. You're not going to be getting a hit a whole bunch more than what's on this page right here on the CCNA exam, but it's still going to be good information. I want to go in and talk about Cisco's unified wireless solution a little bit further as well as go over some terms. Now as far as Cisco's wireless solution we're going to be going over certain terms you're going to need to know, the ar basic architecture of it as well as some inner WLAN routing. We're going to take a look at how that works. First let's go in and go through the terms. In an effort to make the environment, wireless environment, more secure, 
Cisco has introduced the controller. The controller controls stuff. The controller will plug into a router, either a multi-layer switch, obviously with routing capabilities, or a router. The router will plug into a switch, or again, multi-layer switch already has a switch going on in it. Then you've got your access points coming off of the switch, your APs. The controller controls all the data going between the wireless to the wired. So it's going to control the flow between the wireless data to the wired solution. Now, it can also control flow of data between WLANs, wireless LANs as well. And it also makes sure everything is secure, verify security, everything like that when you're getting onto the network. So the controller does a lot. It makes your environment more secure. Has to connect to a router because the controller is the only thing that can take the data off the wireless network and put it into the appropriate wired network. So it's got to go through a router or a device with routing capabilities. A wireless control system you can actually download a demo of this and that's something that allows us to monitor, control the controller, control everything, set it up from a separate system. And this just gives us a little bit more monitoring capabilities, things like that. Now, the access point, that's what's going to allow us access from the wireless network onto the wires here that will get us to the controller. So the access point's actually what's going to be receiving the signal from our systems. Now let me clean up this slide and we'll talk about what lightweight access point protocol does and how it fits into this situation. I cleaned up my drawing a little bit here. So LWAP is lightweight access point protocol, meaning the access point no longer has to do everything. It works with the controller. They work with what's called that split MAC architecture. And what that means is certain real-time duties, like getting the information from the computer, putting it on the basic wire, are done at the access point. Controlling where it's going, the back end of things, the non-real-time duties, are done at the controller. So it's splitting the job old access points used to do. And how it does this is it works with the lightweight access point protocol. So the thing about this is, since this is a lightweight access point here, working with this protocol, it has to go to a controller. So it's going to get the bare necessity information from the computer. It's going to encapsulate it appropriately. This port on the switch and th these ports here have to be able to forward this information over to the controller. So it takes it, forwards it along, the controller decapsulates the LWAP information off of it, everything, and forwards it out appropriately, either in re-encapsulating it for another wireless LAN, as an in inner WLAN routing, or encapsulating it appropriately to be put out on the network. So the controller is doing the back end of things, while this does the real-time necessity communication with the computer. So it's basically a set of rules that allow the client machine to connect to the network and allow for the centralized management. So it does a bare minimum, gets it on the network, the controller does the rest of the work. And that's called a split MAC architecture. Now there are different types of access points. Root access points and mesh access points. Let's talk about those. So in certain situations, we might have access points that are not, well, a lot of situations actually, <laughs> that are not directly connected to the wired network. This would be considered a mesh access point. A root access point 
would be wired or connected directly to the wired network. So mesh, not directly connected to the wired network, root, directly connected to the wired network. And the last thing I want to talk about here is the AWPP protocol. I had to change my drawing a little bit here. Now AWPP, Adaptive Wireless Path Protocol, again anytime we hear that term protocol we're just talking about a set of rules. What set of rules can we use to ensure we take the best path to this root access point? So let's say we have a laptop client connecting up and it's connecting to this mesh access point. Now this thing has to hop over to the root access point and I'm leaving out the, the multi-layer switch or the switch and router here. It's just showing it directly connected to the controller even though it's not going to be directly connected to the controller. How's this going to get back to that root access point so it can get onto the network most efficiently? We don't want it, if these two devices are equal here, we don't want it hitting this mesh access point, then this one, then this one, then this direction. What we want it to do is get to the root access point as fast as possible, which would be this path right here. That's what adaptive wireless path protocol is going to do. It's going to help us get to that root access point so we can get onto the wired network as fast as possible. So to go over these terms again, the controller is a central management system that controls access to the wired network. Now we can monitor as well as configure devices through a wireless control system. You can actually download a 30-day demo from Cisco's website. The access point is our actual access point to the network. Lightweight access point protocol helps us work within a split architecture. So the access point gets us onto the network and the controller does the rest of the work. Root access points are directly connected to the wired network while mesh access points are floating off in space, not directly connected to the network. And this adaptive wireless path protocol is what's going to get us to this root access point as fast as possible. Now let's go in and talk a little bit about securing our wireless network and basically just what protocols are available for that security. Now we're just going over the basics here for securing your WLAN. The main things you're going to need to know are just the 802.11 standards for the Cisco test, but still important to understand some terms. Why do we want to secure our WLAN? There are threats to it. Unauthorized access being the big thing. If we've got an access point sitting out somewhere and it's broadcasting the signal, access to the network, maybe it's a root access point, someone driving around or whatever, they call themselves war drivers. <laughs> people with nothing better to do than to drive around and trying to get into networks. What's going to happen is they can access this signal just like you or I can access this signal. So what we want to do is we want to prevent even though they might be able to see the signal we want to be able to prevent them from connecting to the network. And there's some different types of sets of rules for that. Wired equivalent privacy, basic encryption, use a static key, and it's not the most secure authentication method, but it's still not bad. 8021X, extensible authentication protocol with EAP, dynamic keys, better encryption and authentication. We've got Wi-Fi protected access, uses TKIP, Temporal Key Integrity Protocol for Encryption. It's got dynamic keys and 8021X user authentication. WPA2 uses advanced encryption standards for encryption and 8021X authentication. 
as well as dynamic keys so it's more secure so we use we can work the 8021x and the WPA and WPA2 work together to give a secure connection as well as secure authentication for the users when they're getting onto the network very important and this is again I'm real real quick overview because it's not critical for the CCNA test but just important to know basic protocol names and what's available to help secure your wireless environment now the last thing I want to talk about just real quick guidelines for implementing your wireless LAN set it up first without security test it make sure it's working again we can't see the signal or at least I can't see the signal there might be some people out there I have no idea um, but with our naked eye we're not going to be able to see that signal install and configure the access point again without security configure the wireless client with no security and test it make sure you can access the network verify that connectivity once the connectivity is verified you know it works then go in and configure security with your 8021x user authentication your WPA2 encryption all that stuff go and configure it then and then test it make sure everything's cool now you're not going to have to necessarily go in and configure this for the CCNA but you are going to need to know the basics the protocols, 802.11 standards and stuff for the test. Again, real quick overview of the wireless. If you want to go in and see sample configurations, you can go on Cisco's website and they've got a lot of good configurations with the GUI, a lot of good information if you want to get more in depth. We're just covering what's necessary for the CCNA. Now let's talk about some troubleshooting. As far as troubleshooting, you want to make sure you're using the right channel. Encryption and password settings got to match. Is there a problem with the access point? Can any device see that signal? Signal strength can be weak. Again, walls, stuff like that can cause problems. Distance is a big one. Interference. Configuration of that access point and the client. Again, making sure all settings match. Very important when troubleshooting. Key thing try to set it up without the security first make sure it works and then go ahead and apply, apply the security because if something's wrong with the security you won't know if it's working at all now let's go in and do a little bit of review we have talked about the differences in wireless and the information on the radio waves very important know your 802.11 standards A and the extension of that H, B, G, as well as the upcoming N. Very important. If you know this, you should be all right for the CCNA. 90% of it right there. I would understand the terminology for Cisco's wireless solution. Very important to understand that terminology. LWAP, what the controller does, the split MAC architecture. AWPP, what those things do, what, what the difference between a root and mesh access point is. Not necessarily how to go in and configure everything, but just understand the terms. Same thing for securing your w, WLAN. Just the basic things, 802.1x. Know your, about your user authentication as well as your encryption, your WPA, WPA2. Implementing your WLAN. How are you going to go about implementing that? Again, make sure you check that it's working without security first and then go and test it as well as just a couple of troubleshooting tips again the key thing for the CCNA is all about the 802.11 standards you're not going to get hammered on going in and configuring your wireless LAN 